Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to see how to implement a one-shot circuit for QSpice. In this slide we can see the solution that we have in QSpice. QSpice has this device called Monostable. This is the description. Here we have some information of the pins. This is the symbol corresponding to this component and here are some information related to the different parameters. But the problem is that this monostable, this one shot circuit is not valid for some applications in which we need to change the value of the on time from an external voltage. So let's see better this in the next slide. Here we can see a very simple application of this circuit in which we are fixing the on time to 500 microseconds. We are using a clock here to inject pulses. We are supplying with one volt the monostable and then we have the outputs. So here we can see that it is operating pretty well. This is the clock. So at each positive edge, we have a pulse and the output with the duration of 500 microseconds. The problem is that if we want to control this T on time externally from a voltage source, as shown here in this part here of the slide, then we can use or try to use here a voltage source with a given value 500 microseconds and pass this uh, voltage here to the parameter, but this uh, seems not to work. It's not possible to control this externally. So we get these messages and then this is not possible. And for many applications, especially for example for applications of these DC converters controlled with constant on time, with different strategies, then we need to change externally the on time of the monostable. So in this video today we are going to see how to implement a monostable externally controllable for QSpice. So here we have the implementation in QSpice. We are using a current source of one ampere injecting current into a capacitor here of a given value that can adjust the slope of the ramp that is going to be generated here and with this ramp we are doing the timing of the on time. So at the beginning we start for example here with a high level in the clock. So we are activating the set. So the output is equal to 1, the inverse output is equal to 0 and therefore this switch is open so the voltage across the capacitor is going to increase linearly. When this voltage reaches the maximum value that is adjusted here with this voltage source, the comparator that we have here implemented with a behavioral voltage source is going to switch to 1. So we do a reset of the flip-flop. The inverse output of the flip-flop goes to 1. We activate the switch and discharge the capacitor and the capacitor remains discharged until the next pulse that we are injecting here with the clock. So with the value of this capacitor T gain we can adjust the slope of the ramp and therefore for example if we adjust T gain equal to 1 micro microfarad then if we inject here 4 volts this means that the on time is going to be equal to 4 microseconds. So it's very simple. So now let's do another simulation to see that everything is operating correctly. So now let's do another simulation now and directly using the program. We are adding here a sinusoidal voltage of 3 volts peak superposed to the 4 volts DC and with a frequency of 10 kHz. So with this we are going to modulate the on time that we are injecting into the one shot circuit. So the output here is going to have a changing value of the on time. So let's run the simulation and see the results. So here we have the results of the simulation. We can see the output voltage how the pulse 
is modulated uh, in the own time, the frequency is constant and given by the clock. Here we have the comparison of the value of the own time, the analog value of the own time, with the ramp generating here across the capacitor. So everything is okay and now we are going to see how to create our own symbol in QSpice so we can see the whole process. So I'm going to explain the way I do it. I start with the preview circuit and from it I remove all the unnecessary elements not related with the components. So remove here the voltage source, the voltage source here for the pulses and also I highlight these ports which are the inputs and outputs of the component. This shot here, CLK which is the clock and then the two outputs out and the inverted output. To show a net label as a port, you only have to right click and say this is a port, now it's not a port, or this is a port, now it's a port. So the second thing that I do is to create here on the file a text in which I'm going to create the text definition for the component. So the first line is the line corresponding to the definition of the sub-circuit, the name and the inputs and outputs. So they, they are T-shot, CLK, out and not out. And then we have the rest of the definition, how to get this part here. So very easy, for this we go to view, netlist, and here we have the netlist of our component. So we only have to select, copy this part, and then paste this text on the box here, on the text that we have on the uh, schematic and then just write the last line, which is the ends of the component. So now we have everything. What we can do is double click here, select everything and copy. So we have this for the next step in the creation of the component. And the next step is to go to file, new symbol, to create a new symbol. And then here we can do control V or we can do edit and paste and we have the definition here of our component and now if we want to do to create a standalone symbol which is very interesting then we can click here on this box include the entire file and say yes so we have this and then we only have to move everything I'm not going to do it, just this is very easy, we can uh, just move the different pins and so on. And also note that here we have the complete definition of our component integrated inside the component, so we don't need to have any additional file or library when we are doing the simulation. This is a new feature in QSpice and this is really very interesting. We didn't have this in LTSPICE, so this simplifies very much the sharing of simulation files with other colleagues. So now maybe we can change this description and so on but this is very easy to do. So let's see the final component that I have created. So this is the aspect of the final component. I have added here this attribute T gain of one micro, which is the parameter that we need in our component. And here we have all the information. This is the name. Here we have the complete description the other attributes and the pins. So now everything is ready and hopefully is going to work. So we need to test this in a simulation also to verify that everything is correct. And what I do is to use the same file of the design and testing to test also the component. So I added here the component with the same input, the on, the clock, and these are other names for the outputs and we can compare that these outputs are going to be the same. So we can run the simulation and see what happens. And here we have the results of the simulation so we can see that this is the output 
and this is the output of the component, this is the uh, inverted output of the component, so everything is operating correctly. And finally, another trick that is interesting is how to do changes in our component. So we have to redesign the component, change some values and so on. So at the end, we will get this circuit with the final description and here with the test in Spice. So what we have to do is to send this text into our component, but we need to codify this description in a single line. So what we can do is to copy everything, copy, and then we open a new symbol. This is going to be a symbol that we are not going to use, only to do the codification. So we go to edit, paste, include the entire file, say yes. So now here, we have the codification with the new description of our circuit. So we can uh, go to this line and say control A, control C. So we can go back to our component and then here we do the same. We do control A, we delete everything and then we do control V with the new description. Well, with this we get to the end of this presentation. I have tried to share my last experiences using QSpice. I hope that this information is useful for your future activities. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.